For the hip x-ray, we're going to do the AP and the frog leg lateral. First on the AP hip, to help localize where the hip joint is, palpate on the patient the ASIS. And then the pubic symphysis is going to be at the same level as the greater trochanter prominence. So this is the level of the pubic symphysis. So we're going to draw our line there. And I'm just placing out lines with my sticks. Actually, you'll be doing this visually without having all of this set up. But you want to have a perpendicular line coming from the, this main connecting line from the ASIS to the pubic symphysis. 90 degrees from this line, you're going to have to go down two and a half inches if you want to be centered over the neck of the femur. One and a half inch indicates you're over the head of the femur. So I want to be over the neck of the femur. So I'm centered right at the area I want to be at. So again, palpate ASIS. The pubic symphysis bone is going to be at the same level as the greater trochanter prominence. Okay, so you have these two points. Draw your imaginary line and go down perpendicular from that to have your central ray area. Now, also for our AP hip, you want to roll the leg in. 15 degrees. So just roll the whole leg in and what this does, it rolls the greater trochanter out in profile and the lesser trochanter is going to be rolled so that you cannot see it or you may see just the tip of it. But this presents the neck of the femur best and which is an area which is often fractured. Uh, next is the frog leg lateral the modified cleaves. Now to do this, you can put your cassette in crosswise because the length of the femur is going to be heading out transverse. So you can change your 10 by 12 so that it is going in crosswise. Then bend the knee of the patient up and then let the leg fall out at approximately a 45 degree angle. And again, that's where you get the frog leg term because it looks like frog legs. Okay, so we should still be at the same positioning point, ASIS, greater trochanter for the pubic symphysis. Draw your imaginary line and go down two and a half inches to be right at the neck of the femur. The Lowenstein method is slightly different in that you lay the leg out all the way on its side. So it's easier when the patient bends the opposite leg to help accommodate that. And lay that leg all the way out on its side and then you're going to have to again relocate your hip to make sure that you're still centered. Now I have to move it just a tad because we had a little movement. So palpate ASIS, okay, locate the pubic symphysis, which is right here, draw your imaginary line, then you're going to go down two and a half inches. So that is the Lowenstein method. Alright, now I'm going to straighten the leg out, and next we're going to do just the straight AP pelvis. So I'm going to change out my image receptors and use a 14 by 17. And we want to put the 14 by 17 in crosswise because that's the greater width of the pelvis. So you want to be sure that that is how you have the IR. Now, I'm going to scoot the patient over just a little bit because we're a little too close to the edge of the table. Palpate the crest, and the top of our right is going to be approximately an inch above the crest. Okay? Or 
our central ray is going to be two inches above the pubic symphysis. Now, be sure you have the legs so that the toes are pointing inward. So go ahead and spread the feet out so there's about an 8 to 10 inch distance between them and then turn the toes inward and have the patient hold that position. Again, that will ensure that our lesser trochanter will not be in view, but we see the greater trochanter in the neck of the femur best. Now, for the modified cleaves for the pelvis, you'll have the patient bend up both their knees. So just have the patient bend them up, and then you'll have the patient let their legs fall out to each side. So this really looks like a frog position now. And again, it's called the bilateral frog leg for the pelvis because it's getting both of the hips on there. Again, you can check your centering, make sure that you have the crest included. And then for this, just you really only have to be an inch above the pubic symphysis on the bilateral. Okay, so that's our center. Now, on this, you can either label it right or left for the pelvis. Just be sure that you use the correct marker. Okay, you can relax your legs. When we're imaging just one individual hip, that's when you want to be sure that you mark that one hip. So if you're doing the left hip, be sure and place your left marker on there. 